Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson on communism and China during the Cold War and the cultural revolution that takes place during this time period. So before we begin with the video notes, I do just want to remind you guys that you should have this um, handout open just like we've done in the past. So this is where you're going to be taking notes based on these or this video. And then once we finish the notes, you will complete the activity that is below it. So just make sure you have this open. Um, if you don't, make sure to head to Google Classroom and open this up and then we will get started here. So like I said, today our focus is really on communist China and the Cultural Revolution. So our learning targets are to explain the changes that the Cultural Revolution brought to Chinese society under Mao Zedong, the leader of China during this time, and evaluate why Chinese youth got swept up in this Cultural Revolution, listing at least two ways or reasons that youth during this time were um, drawn to this movement. So we have to look at the start of communism in China, and it really begins with Mao Zedong. Um, and communists win control of China in 1949. Um, you know, in this class, we've talked about how the U.S. policy of containment was trying to prevent the spread of communism or at least keep it in the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe. Um, the Soviet Union was successful in uh, encouraging other communist movements, um, but it, we're going to look at, in particular, China, still to the east of where that Iron Curtain was. Um, and then this is a picture here of Mao Zedong, the leader that we are talking about specifically. And he is going to rule China from 1949 until 1976. And under him, he is going to issue several reforms that uh, have significant impact on Chinese culture. So the very first reform that he implements is something called the Great Leap Forward. And this takes place from 1959 until 1961, right? If you're moving forward, right, you're trying to bring progress. And his goal with this was to really increase China's industrial output, right? He wanted to match China's output um, and production and advancement in technology with that of the West, with the capitalist countries like the United States, like Western Europe. And what he did to do this was establish huge farm communes. So this would have been government-owned land that uh, many farmers would have worked um, as their own, excuse me, my husband just sneezed, guys. <laughs> this is what it's like working from home now. Um, so establishing these large uh, farm communes where the people of China would get together uh, to produce um, crops to then sell to the rest of the world. This was a huge failure. Uh, this actually hurt Mao and his supporter, or, and his support, I should say, um, during this time period, um, in large part because industrial production actually decreased. It actually led to less or fewer things being produced. And because of that, 15 million people are going to starve to death during the time of the Great Leap Forward. Um, you know, this communist structure was just not up to the task of producing for the large population of China. And during this time, Laos, Laos, excuse me, Mao's leadership was questioned. So he's really going to want to put something out there to make sure that the people support him and that he can continue to lead communist China. So, starting in 1966, we see the start of the Cultural Revolution, and this was launched by Mao to keep control of China. Um, Mao, as we've seen in a lot of these communist countries, is first and foremost a totalitarian leader, right? Dictatorships often come uh, to control these communist countries. So he's going to launch this revolution where the goal was to renew the revolutionary spirit of China, to bring some passion and some nationalism back to the Chinese country, and establish a truly classless society, meaning one where there is no rich, or there are no rich and poor classes, everyone is truly the same, which we know is a goal of communism. Now, he is going to create Red Guards. Um, and these Red Guards are the young people who basically led this revolution. The Cultural Revolution was not a revolution of, you know, middle-aged people. This was entirely led by young people, even 
kids your age. So these red guards are going to lead China and try to move away from quote unquote the old way of doing things. Anything that was deemed the old way uh, is going to be destroyed. Um, ideas were going to be uh, thrown out the window if they were the old way. So these Red Guards during this Cultural Revolution are even going to stoop to the level of torturing and killing people like intellectuals, teachers, managers, who don't follow Mao's teachings fully. Now, these ideas, I want to go back a slide here, actually, um, these ideas of the Cultural Revolution are put forward in this here. So this is called Mao's Little Red Book. Mao's Little Red Book was the ideology of the Cultural Revolution. Um, think of it like an instructional guide for how to live in a new China uh, to be this revolutionary country um, that would bring forward a classless society. So this um, is what the Cultural Revolution was rebelling against. So all of these old ways of doing things, old thoughts, old culture, old customs, old habits, right? Mao kept repeating to these young people to rebel is good, to make these changes is good for the country. Okay. As you can see um, on the left here, we've got some propaganda that was put forward by Mao during this time. This is Mao here. And what they're holding in their hands, I know it's kind of hard to see, but these are those little red books. Um, and they're almost, if you take a look, I think some of you guys are already thinking, they're almost worshiping him. They look joyful, right? They, they look happy to be the leaders of this revolution. And then to the right here, this is a real life photo of some of the Red Guards during this time period. Again, very similar to this propaganda picture, actually, holding their little red books, right? Wearing the Chinese and the communist Chinese flag um, on their arms as bands, right? Pushing forward these ideas of Mao Zedong. Now, China after Mao uh, goes a little bit different. After Mao's death, Changes toward capitalism do begin, and we start to see the Chinese economy that we are familiar with today. And we really do see China modernize a little bit more. So in agriculture, in industry, technology, and defense, we're going to see China modernize. Um, and this is where China starts to be a powerhouse in the economy, right? We start to see a lot of trade with China, a lot of manufacturing, a lot of uh, new advancements that we are going to take advantage of after Mao Zedong. Okay, so let's move into our activity for today, specifically looking at what was so appealing about this cultural revolution to the young people of China at that time. So your job is going to be to find two reasons or two things that made the cultural revolution so appealing. Why did young people uh, gravitate toward this movement? What did this movement bring to the young people of China? So on that handout where you took the notes, right underneath those, you will find documents A and B on that handout. Make sure to close read those documents and then answer the summary questions that follow. Um, and remember, your learning target is to evaluate why these young people found the Cultural Revolution so appealing during this time period. So if you guys have any questions, make sure to stop by some office hours, um, Monday through Friday, 9 to 11, and then 1 to 2, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.